Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing this watercolor tutorial on the calendar you might have seen in my April plan with me video. This is one of my favorite watercolors that I've done, so I wanted to do a more in-depth tutorial for you guys, so that way you guys could see how I did it and maybe follow along with me. So I'm getting out all my supplies. I have my watercolor palette, I have my brushes, and I have my Fine Tech Gold watercolors as well. And then I always fill a small bowl with water so that I can clean off my brushes. This one is new. It's from Allison Freitheim Ceramics, and I'm just absolutely in love with it. I think it's adorable. But yeah, those are all the supplies that I'll be using in this video. I'll link them all in the description below. And I'm also going to be doing a watercolor um, supplies video very, very soon. And I know I said that last month and it got a little crazy last month with midterms and everything, but this month um, I'm definitely going to have that as my next video that I put up. Alright, so to start out this painting, I took a ruler and made a double border. And then in each corner, I'm doing just a small little design and I'm trying to make it the same looking in each corner. And you can make this however you'd like, I'm just adding whatever designs I think would look best. Super simple. And then I'm just going to take a top to a candle actually and make a circle. And my circle template doesn't have big enough circles for this, so I like to just take whatever I have around the house. Um, usually I use cups or whatever, just whatever you have that is the perfect size. And then in the middle on the top, I'm going to make a smaller circle, and this is going to be my sun. So I'm going to make my sun have a little face, so I'm going to just add the eyes, the nose, and a mouth. And I'm actually going to go in with gold later on, and I'm going to fill that in. I just wanted to kind of have it so that I could have a rough idea of what it's going to look like. And then inside my circle, I'm going to add a bunch of florals. So I'm starting out just like branches with leaves on it, and I'm just going to build it up as I go. So I'm just adding flowers, I'm adding ferns, um, whatever you are comfortable with drawing for this part, you can do that. And then I'm just drawing a little mountain range and I'm going to do some rays to my sun and I'm going to also build up the florals on the bottom. And I kind of thought it would be cool to have some of the flowers and um, leaves kind of come out of the circle and reach outside of the little scene that I have going in the middle. But yeah, I'm going to just keep sketching some more florals in and then we'll go to the next step. Alright, so now that I have most of my floral sketched in, I'm going to take the same paper that I'm using for my painting and I'm just going to use a scratch paper to kind of test out the colors on this paper before I put them on my actual painting. And this is just a good way to make sure that the color that you are going in with is actually the color that you want to have on your painting. The color that I wanted for the watercolor was like a deep teal color and that's exactly the color that I got with these paints that I'm using. So I'm just going to go in with that in a second after I do one more border around my circle. For this painting I'm going to be using basically only four colors and these ones are my favorite favorite blues to use. I used my three Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors in the colors Indigo, Payne's Gray, and Turquoise. And then I also used my Utrecht Ultramarine Blue. So those are the four colors that I'll be using for the blue colors of this portion of the painting. So when I go into this painting, I want to make sure that the colors that I'm getting are not a flat wash of color throughout the entire painting, but um, instead I want to make sure that in some areas it may be a little bit brighter, in some areas it may be a little bit darker. I might use more water in one area and more saturated watercolor in another. And you'll see the effect this gives in a second once it dries a little bit more, but it looks kind of like a tie-dyed effect as opposed to one flat color throughout the whole thing. So if you see here, I picked up a lot more turquoise in the middle part, and then now I'm going with more indigo. And this is what creates that kind of clouded, interesting looking effect to it. Um, so I'm just going to keep going like that, and I'm going to keep building up the color. And if you notice, I'm staying away from the little patterns I used on the outside. 
um, and I'm just trying to leave them white. It's pretty hard to do that a lot of the time, so I would just suggest doing it after the fact, after it's completely dry. Just go in with a white paint pen. Um, I use the Posca White Extra Fine Point paint pen and it works great and it's just a lot easier than having to try to navigate around those little designs. If you don't have a paint pen though and you end up going the route I did, I would just take a very fine paintbrush. I'll link the one that I um, am using right now. I love this one, but any very fine paintbrush will do. All right, so I just finished up painting and this is how my painting turned out. I love how these colors worked together in this painting and I love the texture that I got out of it. And if you're having problems getting this textured effect, it might be the paper that you're using or the colors that you're using. I've noticed that some of the cheaper brands a lot of the time don't get as much pigment out of them and so it's really hard to achieve this effect. But um, it also really depends on the colors that you're using together as well as whether or not you're using watercolor paper because using watercolor paper will definitely make it easier to get the right colors out of what you're using and the pigment. Um, whereas if you're just using normal paper, it might be really hard to achieve that. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I get asked about this a lot and I know it took me a while to kind of figure out the best papers to use, the best paints to use um, for my kind of painting that I do. So I'll link all of the um, supplies that I used in the description box if you need a reference of any kind, but this is just what I prefer to use for my painting. All right, so now for the mountains, I've mixed a very, very light um, kind of purple color with some Payne's Gray, and I just am going in with a light wash of this. And I'm gonna build up the color as I go, but I'm just starting out with a light wash, and I'm making sure that most of the color stays at the top, and I kind of want it to fade out. So I'm making sure there's more water on my brush when I'm going toward the bottom of the mountain, and I'm gonna pull that water up as I go. I'm going to do this in layers, so I'm going to add my second layer to the top when it's partially dry but not fully dry, and this makes sure that it kind of still is able to disperse out into the color that I already put down. If you notice when I'm painting this, I'm trying to kind of avoid the larger florals because I want to keep the inside of the florals white. But another method you could use instead of doing this is you could paint each floral with masking fluid beforehand and then that way the florals will not have any paint on them afterwards and you just peel it off at the end. And another thing you can do, which I'm going to do in a second to the smaller florals, is just take a white paint pen that's finer or you can just take a paintbrush with some white paint and you can go over it after the mountains have dried. So once I've done about four layers for the mountains, I am done with those and I'm going to move on and do my sun. So to do this, I'm going to use my Gold Fine Tech watercolor palette, and I'll have this linked in the description for you guys, but if you've seen my past few Plan With Me videos, all of my calendars that I've been doing, I've been using this gold palette, and I think it's just so fun to add just a tiny bit of a gold accent to my paintings. So first I've swatched all of the gold paints, and I'm just trying to figure out which colors would suit the sun the best. And I'm actually going to go in with this champagne color because um, I kind of wanted a more subtle gold instead of like a bright yellowy gold. And so I'm going to go in with that and paint over my little sketch. And I've mentioned this in a past video, but if you use this palette, definitely make sure to let some water sit in the paint that you're going to use for about 10 minutes before you actually go in with it. And that way you'll get a lot more pigmented gold and it won't be as patchy um, because the water has fully kind of immersed itself in the paint. So now, like I said earlier, I'm going to go in with my Posca white paint pen. Um, and this is the extra fine one and I'm gonna go in with the florals that I kind of painted over and I'm gonna make sure that the white kind of pops out a little bit more. 
Now you can go back in with whatever you used for your circle template. And I'm gonna go over my circle with my Unipin black ink pen. I believe I used the 05 size for this one. And then for the outer circle, I'm going in with a steady hand and I'm going in with my one point micron pen. Wish that I could stay. Now I'm going to take my O2 micron pen and I'm going to fill in my flowers. Later on I'll take a bit of a thicker pen and go in with some of the florals and that way it just kind of creates a little bit more dimension. Alright, so now that we're done with our mountains and our florals, I'm going to go in with the sun's face and I'm going to outline that. And I'm actually not liking how this turned out, so I'm actually going to go in and fix that in a little bit. But for now, I'm going to do the outline of the sun and its little rays. I'm going to take that same white paint pen that I used earlier and I'm going to go over the face with white so that the black doesn't really show through when I go over it in gold. And so I'm just going to let that dry for a second, do some more of the sun rays, and then I'm going to go over it in gold. I thought the pen that I used for the face was just a little too thick and so I'm going to go in next time with a thinner micron pen to do that. While I have the gold paint on hand, I'm just going to add some gold sun rays as well to my sun. And now I'm going to take my Posca white paint pen again and I'm going to make these little dots because I thought it needed a little something to add to the borders. I'm still letting the gold on my sun dry a little bit. Um, before I go in with the face. So I'm just going to add a couple of gold accents to the florals on the bottom. And I think it's kind of fun to do this because whenever the painting is in the light, you can kind of see the reflection um, not only in the sun, but in other parts of the painting as well. And I almost forgot to outline my border, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take a 0.5 Unipin pen and I'm going to do the first outside border. And then for the very outside border, I'm going to do a little bit of a thicker line for that one. So I'm going to go back in with that same graphic micron pen that I used before. So for this next part, I wanted to do a white line that was a bit thinner on the outside. And it kind of got messed up because the white paint actually like seeped underneath the ruler. So definitely be careful with this and make sure you're using a ruler that doesn't do this. So don't be like me, definitely test it beforehand before you go in with it. But I'm just trying to fix it up a little bit so it doesn't look too bad. Alright, so the gold should be dry by now so I'm going to go in with a thinner pen this time and I'm going to do the face for my son. So I'm just putting the final touches on the sun's face and this is how my painting turned out. Wish that I could stay, wish for this moment to never go away. I was so excited to do this painting because I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do beforehand and it was really nice to just kind of let the ideas flow freely as I went and not really have a structured plan beforehand. So I really enjoyed this painting and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint it. I have this painting as a print in my shop if you guys are interested in getting it as a calendar for your journal or as a print for your wall. But if you end up trying this painting out for yourself, definitely tag me in any photos that you post on Instagram. I love to see your guys' recreations. Alright, I'll see you guys next time and I hope you enjoyed this video.